In this video, I'd like to look at sort of two problems of if you don't have sort of a desktop application for Office or uh, Word or for Excel and you're using, uh, I'm going to use for it in place of Excel, the sort of Excel in a Windows 365. Okay, so first I'm going to start off with a problem of a uh, related problem of let's say I, I have posted a Word document on my Canvas site, um, and then it will sort of uh, render a version of it within Canvas. And what I would normally have people do is download this document and open it. It's much more convenient for, say, copying the data from, from the downloaded version. But let's just suppose that that was not possible. So let's take, let's try to copy from this sort of rendered version within Canvas. So I'm going to copy this uh, data I have for alkaline metals. I'm copying that data. And then I'm going to put it over into a Windows 365 version of Excel. So here I'm going to go over to our portal and I've search for Office 365, and here's the Excel. And again, I would much prefer to have the document downloaded on and opened in, in Windows on the desktop application and copy the data over to Excel. But let's suppose neither of those is available. OK, so now here I am. I've opened up Windows 365 in Excel. And I'm going to try and paste that data. I'll do the one, two, three, the values. But it didn't respect my columns. So that's that's a problem with copying from this uh, this rendered version. OK, so but there's a way around this. Now, I'm not going to I'm going it has spaces. So it has lithium space three space. So I'm going to use that. But uh, these these headers are not going to work so well because I'll have a space between alkali and metal and a space between metal and atoms. So I'm going to uh, just fix the problem, uh, not for the headers, but for everything else. So I'm going to highlight that first column, 227, but not one, not the header row. And I'm going to go to data, and I'm going to go to text to columns. And it's going to uh, have different possible delimiters. It's choosing by default a space, and it's doing sort of what I want here. Now it is splitting them up. And so I've done that. And now, I'm not going to bother with this header or that. I would probably just retype its one row. But if I had a lot of data, it would be a lot of uh, either retyping the data from the beginning or what have you. So this uh, text to columns uh, trick is is nice. OK, now what do I want to do? Now I want to, in Excel, I want to make an XY scatter graph and uh, fit it and so on. And I want to plot the uh, specific heat, which is in column D, versus atomic number, which is in B. So I'm going to highlight the data. I'm going to, again, ignore, especially now with, uh, I really have my headers mixed up. Uh, don't highlight the header column. And I'm not going to highlight uh, francium because it doesn't have a specific heat. It's radioactive. It's not around long enough. So I'm going to highlight uh, two rows two through six in column B, and then I'm going to hold down my control and then high, then drag uh, column D six two through six, and then let go. Now some of my students will just delete the data, delete the columns they don't want, and that works. Um, but let's say I wanted that data for other purposes, then I might like to keep it around. So I can highlight non-consecutive things if I hold down control. So now I have the data I want to make, and I'm going to insert a graph. So insert, and I'm going to make a chart, and I want uh, XY scatter. So I want these dots. Okay. 
And again, now if I were down in the sort of desktop application, I would, there's a quick layout number nine that has a number of features I really like. And I don't, don't know then if that exists in 365. If it does, I don't know where it is. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some things one by one. I have a chart title. I, I want an axis label horizontal. And that is the atomic number. So I'm entering that. I'm going to enter a vertical rotated title. And that was the specific heat. And I don't want a legend, so I'm going to say none. I'm going to edit this uh, chart title. So it was already there. It pops up over here. Um, and I can edit it there. Or I could probably up here say none and then uh, bring it back above the chart. And then it would, so either way, sort of. Um, this is Al Galai metal specific heats or something. Okay. And now, so I have no legend I wanted, access labels I wanted, title I wanted. Now I would like to add a trend line and this is going to be, I'm going to make it a power law. And that is under format. So again, in if I were in the desktop, I would right click on the data point and it would give me the option to add a trend line. But uh, here in 365, it seems to be under this format. And it's under the series option. And then it is sort of down below here. And what I don't like about this is there ought to be a scroll bar here and it goes um, missing, but I can sort of arrow down. So I'm on the keyboard arrowing down and and then the then the scroll bar sort of appears for a while and I'm good down. So again, I was on a uh, format that opened up this. I went for series, I arrowed down, I have your trend line. I want to say that I I have to do this little toggly thing, say I do want a trend line. And um, the scroll bar is annoying me, but, but up, down arrow seem to have work a little bit better. I want to, uh, this is going to be, I want a power law. I want to display the equation on the chart. I'd like the R squared to know if it's a good fit. I'm not going to do any uh, forecasting in this case, although you might want to forecast up to Francine possibly. Um, and then, uh, so that's it. I have the power law fit, it's displayed. So I displayed the, the equation. So I added the trend line, I toggled it on. I made it a power law, I displayed it on the equation on the chart and then displayed its R squared value, which is pretty good. So it seems to be a good fit. And if I were in the application, I would just sort of drag this up, but that doesn't seem to work. But if I arrow um, up, if I'm using up and down arrows, they seem to be work better in 365. And uh, then if I want, I can go home and change the uh, size of that equation to make it a little bit larger. So there we go. That's what I wanted to show. One was this uh, problem of copying. I'm in Canvas. I don't know if people have this problem, but if I'm in Canvas and it's rendering my document, but it's not the real document, and I copied it, did not uh, respect my columns, but there were spaces. And then I used a trick under data. Um, and it's, I don't have anything highlighted right now, but it was this text to columns. And, and that fixed my bringing the data over and losing my columns. 
And then I highlighted the data I wanted and inserted a chart. Um, and when I did that, I was using um, under the chart thing, I was using these options up here to add axis labels, title, get rid of a legend. And then the trend line was under format and it was under series. And then there was this problem of this scroll bar that never seems to appear when I want it. But I have good luck with the up down arrow. And so I had toggle on a trend line, ex, you know, expand that, uh, the features related to that, choose the type, choose to display it, and display the R squared. And I didn't want any uh, forecasting. And that was that. And then I uh, arrowed to get it in position where I wanted to and went home and that's where I could change the font size. So it's much more convenient with the desktop, but if you don't have it available, you can do all these things you want to do. And then you can finally, when you're done, you can do a, a file save as, and if you uh, want to download it on Excel to uh, move it to a place that does have the desktop so that you can work on it further, uh, that's, that's a possibility if you want to get out of the cloud. All right, that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for your attention.